Chapter 105 O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his doings among the peoples. Sing unto him, sing praises unto him, speak you of all his marvelous works. Glory you in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O you seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, and his oath with Isaac. And he established it unto Jacob for a statute, to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto you will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and sojourners in it, and when they went about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yes, for their sake he reproved kings. Touch not my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. And he called a famine upon the land, and he broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph was sold for a servant. His feet they hurt with fetters. His person was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the peoples, and set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his possessions, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly, and made them too mighty for their ad adversaries. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron who he had chosen. They wrought among them his manifold signs and his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, and it was dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and, the, and slew their fish. Their lands swarmed with frogs and their, in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats in all their borders. He gave them hell for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees. He broke the trees of their borders. He spoke, and the locust came, and the canker worm without number and did eat up every herb in the land, and did eat up the fruit of the ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the firstfruits of all their strength. And he brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was none that stumbled among his tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a screen and fire to give light in the night. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them in plenty the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran, a river in the dry places, for he remembered his holy word unto Abraham, his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. And he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took the labor of the peoples in possession, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Well, today we have in the Psalms, uh, Psalms 105, this Psalm of Remembrance, a Psalm of a little, we got a little history written in here, and these paradigms, so to speak, of what, what is to come. And we're going to pick it up here in verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his doings among the peoples. Now give thanks unto God, give thanks unto Hashem, that holy name. We're going to make known his doings, or these things that he has done among the peoples, and it's among the peoples of all the earth, too. Sing unto him, sing praises unto him, speak you of all his marvelous works. Sing unto him, giving thanks, and these of praises, that he is marvelous, he is great, he is exalted above all nations above all peoples and above all kings of the earth 
and we're going to tell of these marvelous things which the Lord has done. Three, glory you in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice to seek the Lord. Glory you in that holy name, in his presence, and let the heart of the, them rejoice that seek the Lord. Those that seek the Lord, that seek that holy name, that seek Hashem, the, exist, the existing one, uh, let that heart rejoice. That Your spirit, your understanding, four, seek you the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Seek the Lord. Seek his strength. Seek his face. Uh, those things that he makes plain in the earth. It's the blessings and the cursings that he made clear from the beginning through the law. It is his strength. Seek the Lord. Five, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Now remember his marvelous works, those things he's done in the past, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Those things that God said would, he would do if they didn't keep the law. or And this was from the beginning. We'll find out. We're going to go all the way back, uh, even to mention the children of Noah. Six. O oh, you seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. You seed of Abraham, those that come forth from Abraham. Abraham is the father of many nations. And why that is so, he is not only the... He is the the ancestral root of all these nations. Uh, we'll find out not only Jacob and those that would come from Isaac or Yishak. The, we're talking also about uh, the sons of Ishmael and the many other sons that Hagar bore unto Abraham. Uh, and we'll, here we're specifically mentioning, though, you children of Jacob. Because they was took and made an example of, from the beginning, his chosen ones. And these chosen ones, we're going to find out, these ones that the Lord's going to make an example of. Seven, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. And he is the Lord our God. He is the existing one. And he is our creator. His judgments are in all the earth. And we bear witness of these things that the Lord has done. Uh, it's a very very simple thing and even in all flesh we witness these things eight he hath remembered his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations and he's remembered his covenant forever or he's going to call it to remembrance forever his covenant that simple agreement that he made with the children of israel when they come up out of egypt we're going to get this example here this is the word that he commanded to a thousand generations. A thousand, simply all of them. It means fulfillment, to complete it, to uh, make to be done. These generations, to all of them. Nine, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath with Isaac. And this covenant that we're talking about here is this agreement which he made with Abraham and his oath was with Isaac. Abraham, once again, was the father of many nations. Isaac is this one who laughs, we'll remember, because Sarah laughed. She was very old when she gave birth to Isaac. The, the covenant uh, still remains, 10. And he established it unto Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And he established it under Jacob, or he carried it through, gave it over to Jacob. He was the supplanter. He was the one who was going to uh, take charge of that which is really not his, but he, he receives it through this everlasting covenant to Israel. Israel is those that contend with the mighty one. Uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with the angel. And this was an everlasting covenant. This everlasting was an agreement they made. And uh, they did make this agreement with God. It was a free will thing, saying, yes, we will do it they agreed to the agreement and that's this covenant and that was to keep the law keep his ordinances and his statutes forever leaven saying unto you will i give the land of canaan the lot of your inheritance and the lord said to him unto you will i give the land of canaan canaan is uh the sons of cain they come from the 
descendants um, uh, that was in the land. Uh, actually, they're descendants of of Noah, and they was in the land already. These are those that had a covenant. There, there was an agreement already made with God, and and those were and they were going to be the example of the first ones that didn't keep God's covenant. And we'll find that that it's documented in Noah when the, all the people of the earth uh, wouldn't do what God asked them to do. And God prepared this ark, had Noah prepare the ark, and this ark is going to be this covenant. Twelve, when they were but a few men in number, yes, very few, and sojourners in it. And this is during a time when they were just a few men and in number, and we'll remember it was just um, Abraham and his and his servants and Sarah, and there were very few. Uh, they were sojourners in it. They just lived there and worked around in that area among the people. Thirteen, when they went about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, and this was during the period of time when Abraham and Sarah was wandering, was going around, and. Uh, uh, 14, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yes, for their sake he reproved kings. And he didn't suffer anybody. He didn't let no man hurt him. He didn't let no man do them wrong or defile them. For their sake he reproved kings. And we'll remember the kings he reproved when Abraham said that Sarah was his sister. Uh, this reproving the kings. In other words, uh, to keep them from uh, the violating of the law. 15. Touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed ones. Uh, we'll see with this anointed ones. Here is a plural. There's more than one. We'll find out. Uh, and it, we're going to include the prophets here to not do them any harm. A prophet is a speaker. Somebody speaks for the Lord. My anointed ones, they are the anointed is the messiah. These ones who have the law, they've got the understanding of God. They keep the understanding of God. It's nothing really hard to understand. The oil comes from the olive, and the olive represents this this law of God, which provides the oil for the fire. 16. And he called a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. And the Lord called for famine upon the land. Now, this was during the period of time of, of, of Jacob. Uh, we'll find out after they sent Joseph into Egypt. And he broke the whole staff of bread. In other words, there, the, uh, there was a famine in the land. This famine was for substance. As today, this famine is for the word. We have this same paradigm. 17, he sent a man before them. Joseph was sold for a servant. So he sent a man before them. He sent somebody to prepare a way, to make a way, and it was Joseph. Joseph is uh, something that's been added, and we're going to find out in the end. It's, it's going to be this extra flock that's added, the uh, addition of, of, of Joseph's sons. And Joseph was sold for a servant or to serve, and we'll find out that that's exactly what he's going to be, what's going to happen to him. 18. His feet they hurt with fetters, his person was laid in iron. His feet they hurt with these fetters. Fetters are those things that bind, they bind you in your path. His person was laid in iron. Iron are the, is a. In this situation, it was the prison house or the jail house. But in the, to be laid in these irons is, is to be found under the law of man, to be found even guilty under the laws of man, to be put into iron. Nineteen until the time of until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him, and it would be until the time that his word was come to pass, and we remember the dream that he interpreted to the. Uh, servants of the king. Twenty. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the peoples, and set him free. And we're talking. And we remember when the Pharaoh, 
the Pharaoh sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people. So that's who was the was the ruler, and he and he will remember he made Joseph over all of his house, second only to him. Twenty one, he made him lord of his house and ruler of his possessions, and that's what he did. He made him lord of his house. And that means to be the ruler of his house, his possessions. He took care of the business of the Pharaoh or the king. However you want to look at it, it's all one thing. He was the ruler of the peoples. You know, there's a long ways we can go with that. This this one who was exalted over all the peoples. We'll find out they, they wasn't keeping the law of God. These would be from the sons of Ham, as we're going to find out. 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom to bind his princes at his pleasures or to be uh, at it over over all his princes over all these other rulers that were in the land and to teach his elders wisdom these ones that were supposed to be the wisest of the land joseph was taken up out of the prison to give them understanding 23 israel also came into egypt and jacob sojourned in the land of ham and israel those that contend with the mighty one also came into Egypt. That's that land of pits and snares and holes and traps. Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And Jacob is the supplanter. He is the one who sojourned in the land of Ham. Ham, um, it was a descendant of Noah, one of the sons of Noah. Ham means uh, to warm up. To warm up, to grow hot, to slowly catch on fire and burn. And we'll find out. It's from the judgments of God where they had violated the law over many years and God had strived with them, God had worked with them, but they wouldn't turn. They wouldn't come back to the law of God. We'll find out at Egypt, that land of holes, snares, and pits, and the laws of man had done, slipped off into their own understanding and built, made them not a gods and fell down before them and used them to rule over the people. It was a great power they held, 24, and he increased his people greatly and made them too mighty for their adversaries. But the Lord increased his people greatly, those that were there in the land of Goshen, and he built them up till they were mighty and great, and Egypt began to fear them for their strength, 25. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. And the Lord hardened the people's heart. And they began to deal craftily with his servants. They began to enslave them, overwork them, bring them under their their understandings and and their pitfalls in these teachings of men and these their ideals of salvation. Twenty six. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron he made and Aaron whom he had chosen. So he sends Moses his servant. Moses is the one that's drawn out. Moses was taken out of the water, or he was drawn out of the understanding. We'll remember by the burning bush. Moses heard the voice of God in that bush that was burning or being on fire but was not being consumed. And Aaron, whom he had chosen, Aaron is the light giver. Yeah, this one who was chosen will find out to go with Moses, to speak for Moses, who became the father of all the priests, 27 they wrought among his ma- they wrought among them his manifold signs and wonders in the land of Ham. And they worked among these people of Egypt, these ones who had the pantheon of gods, who had all the laws and all the rules, God's manifold signs and wonders. And he did them in the land of Ham. Once again, Ham is that place that's growing hot, growing warm. God's showing his judgments there slowly. It's building up, it's building up. And God's going to make them known. This was the signs that are manifold or magnified, folded up over and over. Uh, Let's go, and we're going to find out here, these signs are actually the words, the words of God. These are what God spoke. This is what God said. And we'll find out in the overall, uh, that's what they showed, that, that God's word comes true. God's understanding goes forth, and it does what it says it's going to do. 28. He sent darkness, and it was dark, and they rebelled not against his word. And God sent the darkness. Darkness, it was the paradigm for this evilness, this worth, this 
uh, absence of understanding that was coming. It was dark. And these was called the days of darkness. And they rebelled not against his word. We'll find out the, the, the children of Israel kept the sayings of the Lord. 29. He turned their waters into blood and slew their flit, and slew their fish. And he turned their waters into blood. This was what he done to Egypt. He turned their waters, this was their understanding, into blood. Blood is, is the, the, what's considered that life that's within it. But the, this here, blood, is, is uh, that which has to be poured out. It's no good. It, you can't consume it. It's, it's sin. And they slew their fish. This life. And, and slew their fish, the life that was in the waters. Those things that live in the understandings. Why? Because the understandings became polluted by the blood. 30. Their land swarmed with frogs in the chambers of their kings. And their land, everywhere they lived, swarmed with these frogs. These detestable things that hop around in the chambers of the kings. Uh, within the dwellings, even of the kings, the Molechs. These were gods to the Egyptians. Kings and pharaohs used to be what was considered to be gods because they had kingdoms. Funny how very little changes. 31. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats in all their borders. And the Lord spoke. And there came these swarms of flies and gnats. These things that flitter. These things that go about. And they're, what they do is aggravate. They, they, they buzz around. They aggravate. They're, and this is what it is. It's, it's aggravation. It's torment. It's, it's troublesome. We didn't even mention the lice here in all their borders. This is within the confines of their dwellings is what their borders are here. 32, he gave them hell for rain, flaming fire in their land. So the Lord gave them some hell for rain. Rain is that which nourishes, that which gives life. It's the waters of heaven. But the hell is those frozen waters of heaven, those that have come from the north, these of judgment, and, the, and that's what they represent. And these flaming fires in their land, these flaming fires are, are these judgments of God in their land or with them where they live, their dwelling places, because we'll see that God making an example, uh, uh, punishing for their sin, 33. Uh, and that's exactly what it is, 33. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and broke the trees of their borders. He smote their vines these things that give fruit, their fig trees, these fruit trees, and broke the trees of their borders. The trees of their borders are their land markers, these that show the, the where their property lines are. 34. He spoke, and the locust came, and the canker worm without number. And once again, God spoke. The locust came, that's the devourer. And these canker worms without number, that that's the young, the small locust before it's uh, had time to, to grow and because of the multitudes of them. These are the hatchlings, we should say, the, those that come forth in the multitude of the destroyer. This destroyer here is a paradigm of the devourer, 35, and did eat up every herb in the land and did eat up the fruit of the ground. And they did eat up the herb in their land, these things that were sent for their service to do them good they used it for medicines they used it for incense they used it for seasonings it had a multi purposes and they did eat up the fruit of the ground all their crops all their goodness that they had the abundance that they looked forward to this is a major thing during that period of time because they just didn't have grocery stores you could run down there and get everything you need come from all over the world 36 he smote also the firstborn in their land the first fruits of their strength so the Lord smote all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of their strength. And this is this is the one that finally did it. They they let the people go after this, because the, to to lose your firstborn is like to lose the 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 fruit of your strength, or the beginnings of your dream. 
37, and he brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was none that stumbled among his tribes. And he brought them forth with silver and gold. And that's what the people give them before they left. The silver uh, represents a that which has to pass through the fire. The gold's what belongs to God anyway. There wasn't none that stumbled. There wasn't none that staggered around that, that fell about the way as, as they went forth. 38, Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. In that place of holes and pits, snares, they was glad when they departed. Because even there, the Lord had shown he is God, and this fear that had fallen upon them was just that, the fear of the Lord. For they knew that all their not a gods was just that, they were not a gods, that the Lord who gave the law in the beginning, he was God. 39, he spread a cloud for a screen and fire to give light in the night. He spread his cloud for a screen. Or to hide these things, it's like the confusion of it all. The fire is the judgment, and it gives the light in the night. The night is a place of darkness. It's where there is no understanding, but the light in it, the light that comes from this fire, and the fire is coming from the judgments of God. 40. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them in, gave them in plenty the bread of heaven. They asked. He brought them quails. And we can go read this story. Uh, he gave them quails. And he wasn't happy about the fact that they, they wanted this. They wanted this flesh because God had given them plenty of bread of heaven, plenty from, of the nourishment of understanding this manna that had fell upon the earth. And they wanted for nothing, but there was those that complained. There was those that just never have enough. They can, they can get it the best of the best, this bread of heaven, and it's just not enough. So they wanted more, and God gave them more. And God separated through that, and he found out those that was gluttonous, those that would would never get their fill. And he they ate until they puked this out their noses, and God destroyed them. 41, he opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran, and a river, a river in the dry places, and he opened the rock. That which was established, that was placed there, was there already. It was already there. This rock is going to represent the law of God. It's that firm thing that was established from the beginning. And these waters gushed down. And all the understanding came flowing up out of the rock, that law that God established in the beginning. And they ran as a river in the dry places. And once again, we have this paradigm of these things that would come. This river this waters that flow from above that come down that descend into the dry places to to nourish to give what life giving water or understanding to these places that have been parched 42 for he remembered his holy word unto abraham his servant for the lord he remembered his holy word that word when god makes a promise when god says he's going to do something he's sure to do it this it becomes a holy word or a word that's established, it's set aside, it's sanctified for the purpose of God. Maybe God wants to use it. He's got a little work he wants to do with that word. And it was unto Abraham his servant. Abraham was the father of these many, 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 many nations. He was the servant of the Lord, or this one who would serve, the one who would work for, the one who would accomplish uh, the will of God in the earth, 43. And he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. And God brings forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. These ones that keep his ordinances, keep his law, keep his understanding, they go forth uh, straight away, even today. 44. And he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took the labor of the peoples in possessions. And he gave them the land of the nations, all these other nations that dwelt in that land of Canaan, where that did not keep the law from the before. See, God was making an example. You know, that, that sooner or later, there's, there's judgment that comes. And these are those that don't keep the law. The law is going to prevail every time, and those of the covenant are going to prevail every time. Even then did they a remnant come forth out of there, 45, 
that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. And it's so that they might receive this this land uh, uh, for a perpetual ordinance to keep his statutes and observe his laws, to do, observe, understand, keep, accomplish uh, the ordinances and statutes and laws of the Lord. And it became a land uh, of those that will, those that do, those and those that do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise praise Hashem. Praise that holy name. We'll find out. It was his work from the beginning. It was his work yesterday. It's his work today. It will be his work tomorrow. We're going to move forward. Psalms 106. Turn and return.